as the beginning of our conversation, welcome in the long term, the long time and term for that matter, voice of the Cincinnati Bengals, Dan Horde. Good to see you, sir. How's Likewise, Joe Andrew. Burrow's tweet here being taken not only in the locker room there in Cincinnati, but in the community? I think it's playing well all over the country, quite honestly, with NFL players and with citizens in general. And it shows one of the reasons why the Bengals drafted Joe Burrow. He is a leader. It was true at LSU. I'm confident it's going to be true in Cincinnati. And think about that message that you read. The part that I thought was the most powerful were the words, open your ears, listen, and speak. So many of us, myself included, haven't always spoken when they felt when we felt uh, that it was important to do so. And I think Joe Burrow is going to do that about this issue and about many others during his NFL career. And it probably carries a little more weight. Dan, tell me if I'm wrong here. You're the one who lives there. Uh, does it carry a little more weight considering, I know Athens isn't right around the corner, but he is an Ohio guy. Hard to say where that's concerned, but I do think that Joe Burrow has shown his empathy for people that need help. If you remember his Heisman speech, that was such a powerful moment in that speech. And now in this situation, he recognizes the plight of others. And uh, again, I think that's going to resonate well, not only in, in the Bengals locker room and in this community, but all over the country. We'll make the somewhat awkward turn now back to football. We open this segment here, Dan, with A.J. Green. Highlights there. Certainly he is one of the best, but we didn't see him last year. He has the franchise tag this year. And contractual issues aside, are they confident that when he gets on the field that he'll be no worse for wear, that we will go back to that guy we just saw there? They are confident, and they can base that on how he looked at the very end last season. There was no point in having him play at the end of last year. The Bengals only won two games, but he was practicing before games, getting out and working out during the pregame warmups prior to the last few games of last year, and he looked like the old A.J. Green. So they are very confident that he is going to be the player who went to the Pro Bowl in his first seven NFL seasons. And if you look back at the Bengals' history since he's been part of this franchise in 2011, when A.J. Green plays, the Bengals win. Just two years ago, he played the first half of the season. At the midway point, they were 5-3. and three. They were tied for the third best record in the AFC at the time. Since he's been hurt, they've only won three games. So they think not only will he be the old A.J. Green, but he can help them win games. It's not a two-man team, more than quarterback and wide receiver, although they do get all the attention, Dan. But are those two pieces, the fact that you have a young quarterback, one overall, and a veteran wide receiver here, uh, and you want to show them both that you're serious. Are those two pieces the reason this team was a lot more aggressive this offseason in free agency? Well, I think the fact that they knew they were going to have Joe Burrow as their starting quarterback in a rookie contract where he's only going to make approximately $36 million over the next four years, that gives you a lot more financial freedom to invest in free agency. So the Bengals went out and signed eight unrestricted free agents. They spent more than $130 million. They were one of the biggest spenders in free agency, which honestly hasn't always been this team's uh, mode of operation. And they think that they signed five defensive starters in free agency. So having that financial freedom from having a, a, a quarterback in his rookie contract Gave them the opportunity to do that, and they seized on that opportunity. Dan, what did Zach Taylor, you think, learn year number one? You, you were there every day. It's not easy for a rookie head coach to step in, and certainly the wins weren't there. But there were signs throughout the season that, yeah, this can work. Well, I think he learned – what players on this roster can be parts of a winning team moving forward. And some of the guys that he didn't feel that way about are no longer here. But if you look at the rookie head coaches in the NFL last year, there were eight of them. Seven had losing records. Five didn't win a game in the first four weeks of the season. So it's difficult in your first year as an NFL head coach. They went through those growing pains. And I know his boss, Mike Brown, thinks that he has a very a bright and talented young coach going forward in Zach Taylor. 
And we're going to find out right out of the gate what kind of team they have as they get the Chargers week number one there in Cincinnati on that first big Sunday, September 13th. Dan Horde will be on the call for that. Dan, I'll say it again. It is good to see you safe and healthy, sir. It's been too long. Hopefully we talk again soon. Sounds good, Andrew. Thank you.